Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Eclipse under Linux to work with a small C program or C project that is built using a makefile. So to begin with, you have to download Eclipse if you don't already have it installed. The easiest way is to go to eclipse.org, click on Downloads, and you're going to want to find the one that is for the C. So let me just scroll down here until we find here Eclipse IDE for C slash C++ developers. It is possible to install all the add-ons into other versions of Eclipse that you may have installed. This is just the easy way. So pick the 32 or 64-bit version and download that. I'm running inside of a 64-bit uh, virtual machine, so I've already got the Linux 64-bit file downloaded. The next thing you'll do uh, is you'll want to extract that. You'll get a um, zip file when you download this, and you just want to extract it. Now I've chosen to already extract mine into my home directory. Let's crush that down into my home directory under the Eclipse folder. And here is the actual Eclipse executable. So the way I'm going to execute this is generally from the command line. So I'm going to launch a command line here. This is under Ubuntu, so I click on the terminal on the left hand bar. Or I can also hit Alt Control T and it launches me a new terminal that pops up here. So I've already got a terminal. So I'm going to run that. So if no matter where I am, I can type slash to get the or sorry tilde to get the home directory. Slash E, I'm going to hit tab here to tab complete for Eclipse. E again to tab complete, and this is what I want to run. If I put an ampersand at the end, it runs it in the background, so I remain in control of my terminal. And here we see Eclipse loading up for me. Now, this demo is going to be built around the idea if you've already got some files that you want to load in. Maybe you've got a sample file, like a Hello World example that you want to see. So I've built a little Hello World example. Let me just open it up in the uh, viewer here. So I've got a make file and hello world.c. So maybe this is a uh, uh, archive that you've downloaded from a website, maybe a course project or something like that. So what I can do is I can extract that. So I'm going to open that up. And you can do this through the command line, a bunch of other ways. Let's create a new folder. I'm going to call this one hello world. And I'm simply going to do this the simple way of uh, drag and drop them in. You can extract from the command line or um, even get Eclipse to extract it, but this is the simplest. So now I want to pull these into a project. So I've got my Eclipse here. First thing I want to do is get rid of this welcome screen and actually get into the real meat of the IDE. On the left hand side in my project explorer, I'm going to create a new project. And so I'm going to import here. Because I've already got some things on the file system I want, so I'm going to import. Under C slash C++, I want to select an existing code as a makefile project. So click Next. I could type in this manually, but I'm going to select Browse instead. I'm going to go to my Video Demos folder here where I put it in. Hello World, here's all the code. Click OK. Hello World sounds like a good name. I'm going to select the Linux GCC compilers here. And let that pull it in. So now I've got my project on the left. Incidentally, there may be some rendering glitches in this video because I am running through a virtual machine. So here are all my files that have been pulled in. The includes is just something that um, Eclipse is adding for me. But the main meat of this project is my hello world.c. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these things on the right hand side because they just, well, I'll leave the make file open and I'll leave the target. So, well, let's get rid of that. Why not? Okay. So, this is the code. It's got the single main function that's going to start execution. And I'm simply going to print out to the screen hello world. And if I look into my make file, the make file's got a little bit more going on in it. The make file, if you've never used them before, is the directions on how to build your project. Um, a lot of Linux projects are built around this. So at the top I'm setting up some sort of constants that are going to be used later on in my um, co commands basically, or my targets. So here I'm setting up the C compiler that I'm going to use in C and C++. Here I set up some CC flags. These, these are the flags to pass when I'm compiling C files. G is for giving me uh, debug information. Dash STD equals C99 gives me uh, C99 support, so I can do uh, variable declaration in a for loop. And W all and W error, respectively, turn on all warnings and make all warnings seem like errors so that it will not compile. Uh, 
This is great because C will let you get away with a lot of things, but most of those things it can catch, give you a warning, and in this case an error, and force me to fix them before going on. This is just great for clean coding, prevents me from doing sloppy things. In a make file, generally the first thing I've got is a target for all. So any on the left hand side, with, if I've got a word followed by a full colon, that sets up a target. So here I have the target for all, down here I have a target for hello. All is generally what the make is going to expect to see first, and it's going to sort of build my entire project. Now in this case on the right, I can then specify other targets that I wish to have built basically that all depends on. So in this case I'm going to build a hello target and a test target, which are down here at the bottom. So hello is going to execute this command, which is going to build the hello world executable from hello world.o. Where did hello world.o come from? Well that is my object file. That was built by this somewhat cryptic line as described in this comments. Um, effectively I'm going to build all uh, .o files from .c files as required. Down here at the bottom, I've also got a test that I've put in here. And test is automatically going to, well, first depend on the hello, so make sure I've built it. And then it's going to actually run. So this is going to execute my hello world command. For the moment, I don't want to run the test, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to delete the test from my um, target. At the bottom, I've also got another one for clean. This is a standard uh, make target. And it's going to remove sort of the uh, build artifacts, so the .o files for the object files, as well as my executable, the hello world. OK, so that's sort of a reasonably simple, kind of standard uh, make file. So what else do I want to see here? Well, how do I actually build this? Eclipse has imported this as a makefile project, and so it is expecting this makefile here to control the build. Eclipse isn't going to do any magic behind the scenes for me, other than trying to build. If I just hit Control B or go to the menu here and say Project Build All, it's actually going to look for the All target, and that's what it's going to run when I say Build. Likewise, if I go up here to Project and then Clean, it's automatically going to look for the Clean target. You can configure that, but this is a good sort of standard default. So now if I hit Control B, it will go through and build. If I can look at the console, we can see the commands that were executed. So we built my hello.c. That will automatically compile into, uh, because I'm just saying compile here, that's going to compile into hello world.o, which we can see right here. and I'm going to then link those together into the hello world executable right here. So if I go back to a console, and I'm going to switch into my video demo workspace, switch into my hello world. I'm using tab complete here to avoid typing everything. And I can run hello world. So dot slash, I have to tell Linux I want to run something in the current folder, otherwise it's not going to know where to find it. And then we have it. Let's just prove that that's actually what we're running. It's always nice to, uh, to see that. So hello world, uh, welcome to the show. Change that. I'm going to control S to save, control B to build. It re rebuilt it. And now I can type hit up and enter. And we can see that it's uh, sitting there and working. Quite often, if you get a problem in your build, you might have to go up here to project clean. I'm going to clean all projects, and that will effectively run my make clean, which then removes those extra files. We can see on the left, the .o and the hello world executable have been removed. If I go to my console, I can list the files with ls, and they're gone. OK, so that's the, uh, the basics there of what we wanted to do. Let's just write a few more lines of code here to, uh, to just kind of just see what we can do. Now, I want to show another feature of Eclipse. I'm going to sort of mess up my indentation. I'm going to put a whole bunch of spaces here. Uh, just a test of bad formatting. Slash n for new line. We can see here that the uh, spell checker kicks in. It says, hey, maybe that's not what you wanted. So formatting, we can change that. This is quite handy, not only for all the output you put to your screen, but also in your comments. So poorly written comment. And it comes up and it red underlines this, saying, hey, maybe you wanted to fix that. This is just a fantastic way of, most over slowly, of making sure that your code is of a higher quality. 
So in Eclipse, there's some very powerful features for your code. You can do things like uh, reformatting your code automatically. So I can go up into, let's click into that. Oops. Go back in here, Alt. And I can go to Source. And there's a Format option. So Shift, Control, F if you wanted. And it will automatically reformat your code according to what it thinks the style should be. You can configure the style. Um, I like to go with the um, kind of K&R styling, so you can go through and change that in the uh, the options for your project. But it went through and it fixed all of my indentation and my spacing for me. Another great feature is variable renaming. So I can come up with a variable name here, say int, um, you know, height equals 10, and maybe down here. Height is percent %d for a decimal value in base 10, and height, I can show it here. Now if later on I realize that height isn't a great name, maybe I want to call this height in meters, I can go Alt-Shift-R, which does, activates refactoring, height in meters. And as I type, and hit enter at the end, it renames the variable everywhere it's used. You can use this refactoring on variables, on functions, on almost anything you've got. And it's a great way to quickly uh, clean up the quality of your code. So now I've got this. I'm going to control B to build. Come back over here, and let's run it. Height is 10. Looking good. The one last thing I wanted to show is if you're just running or building and running, you can in your make file change my, I'm going to change the all at the top here to instead of just depending on hello, I'm going to make it depend on hello and test. So now every time I build, it's going to first build it, as shown here with the make all compiling and so forth. And then when I start to run the actual test, which was this test target, it's actually going to execute my or run my executable, and so I see it actually running here. It's just a nice fast way of maybe running the program. Not generally a standard thing to do, but kind of a neat feature. Okay, thank you very much for watching.